Hi guys, thank you for coming. My name is uh, Mario Fusco. I work for Red Hat. I'm the project leader of Drools, the rule engine of Red Hat. Uh, and I'm here to talk about my travel during these last 20 years as a developer. My travel uh, from object-oriented, from extreme object orientation to sort of extreme uh, functional programming, and then a little back in, in search for uh, pragmatic programming. The, the, the better, well, not the better, the most reasonable way of, uh, uh, of doing stuff, okay? So uh, why I'm doing this talk? This talk uh, uh, mainly started from a, a bad joke or a, a few bad joke. You, you probably you have seen something like this uh, on the internet. So uh, we have a bunch of weird uh, or uh, questionable pattern uh, on the object-oriented side and everything uh, resorted to a function if you think about it in terms of functional programming. And I recently did the same. Uh, I did this talk uh, last year where uh, I did some live coding. I don't know if you saw it, but it's online if you look for it. Uh, where I started from uh, the canonical way of implementing some um, uh, uh, pattern using the, the, the um, design pattern, the Gang of Four design pattern, and I rewrote it in a more functional way. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, you can find uh, the code of these examples on my GitHub, and then uh, uh, somebody else contributed, and uh, then then uh, somebody did a Kotlin version of this, a Swift version of this. So if you go on my on this project, uh, you will find uh, both this other version linked by. But the point of this is that uh, I. Uh, implicitly said that the functional uh, uh, programming was better than object-oriented because uh, I reworked all those examples in a functional style and of course uh, many of them were uh, was more concise and, uh, and uh, easy to write and to understand in a functional way. And uh, I involuntarily created uh, a feeling that uh, I, I'm saying, okay, forget uh, about uh, object-oriented programming, just do the functional way. And this is not this is not my message. Okay, I was creating a false. I was not myself creating, but I was contributing to a false dichotomy. Okay, and then um, I looked around me in the last year and month, and I realized that in reality our world. Uh, Today, world is full of false, of false dichotomy. We are saying that, uh, uh, or they are saying, politics are told, telling us that uh, uh, either we make the, the people, the normal people happy or the market happy. Uh, either we care about uh, the local or we care about the immigrants. Either uh, we want a stronger nation or we, uh, we want a stronger Europe. Uh, either we care about uh, the industry or we care about the environment. So uh, there are a lot of dichotomies around us. And they are all, all false dichotomies. Uh, because you, in reality, you can create synergy. If there is more, more work, you, the, uh, the people are happy and the, the, mar the markets are happy. Uh, of course, you, you can make a lot of money doing industry, but in an environmental friendly way, right? Uh, and uh, and the, the same thing applies for, for, for the politics. I don't want to go there, but... Uh, and, and you know, and, and why it is, uh, think about it, why these dichotomies uh, uh, work on us, okay? Because uh, we are lazy. Our brain is lazy. If somebody tells you you have to choose between A or B, you have to choose between A or B, what do you do? You choose A or B. But you, you don't need to choose either 100% A or 100% B, okay? Uh, 
leaving aside that there could be, in some cases, a, a, a C possibility, but I don't want to go there. It's not uh, all black or, or white. There are a lots of shades of gray in the, in the middle. Okay? And uh, we, as experienced developer, as engineer, we have to find the right shades of gray for the problem. Okay? And uh, if, you f if you think about this even in terms of politics sometimes, it's not a bad idea. But anyway, uh, if you think about uh, more closely to our context, uh, we do this uh, a, a lot of time in our, in our uh, job, right? So uh, there is the SQL versus the NoSQL stuff, and uh, ooh, which one is better, and uh, it's, uh, it's an eternal fight. And there is the monolithic architecture versus the microservice one, and, uh, you know, it's a really a blow red uh, uh, division. It's a really... Uh, you, how, how, how much you have to split a monolith before you have a microservice? I mean, it's hard to tell, right? And uh, uh, for instance, I told you I'm, I'm the developer of the uh, uh, rule engine of, of Red Hat, of Drools. And now they are all saying, okay, this is all the old stuff and you, we do. Uh, everything with the neural network and artificial intelligence, uh, throw away your stuff. And well, artificial uh, uh, neural network, deep learning is great, but also Drews is artificial intelligence. It's a different kind of artificial intelligence. And probably you could do better if you apply uh, them uh, in parallel for doing things uh, for, for what they are good at. Okay, for instance, uh, a few months ago I bought my new phone on Amazon, and then from that day, Amazon started uh, uh, sending me emails uh, saying, uh, uh, you bought this phone, maybe you would like to buy these other three phones. Why? <laughs> Why? Because the neural network decided that there is a, 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 a statistical correlation between this phone and all other phones that uh, Amazon sells, and of, of course it is, but this is not the point, okay? If you use a business rule engine, you can just write a rule that say, you know, this guy's just bought, bought a phone, don't suggest other phone to, to him for at least six months, right? So it, it's a very obvious thing, and if you make things to work together, you can have a better final result. And of course, the other dichotomy, the, the one that uh, I want to discuss today, it's between object-oriented and functional programming. And uh, uh, let's think, let's speak first about some uh, myth, okay? Uh, this is the, the first one. Uh, we are used to think uh, in to, to object-oriented programming in those terms. Uh, and yes, uh, I started developing, uh, doing professional development like, well, now 22 or 23 years ago. And uh, when I started, uh, they, somebody gave me this book. Who knows, who knows this book? Yeah, all of you, throw it away, please. Throw it away, okay? Uh, they gave me this book, they told me this is your Bible, and I used it as a Bible, and uh, this destroyed my career for the uh, 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 next 15 years at least, okay? Because you have this strange pattern, and then you, f you start thinking in those terms, and then you end up with stuff like this. Uh, and, uh, and in reality, this is not what you want, okay? And, uh, the creator of object oriented uh, of the definition of ob object orientation anarchy said that uh, when he thought about this he didn't have c++ or java which is the same thing in mind at all okay uh, and uh, i believe this is has been how object oriented has been taught and how object oriented has been implemented in real world has been uh, the big one of the biggest misunderstanding of the history of the of uh, engineering okay it's a it's a totally big mix it, it is a, 
a different pattern, okay? They call it, uh, Alan Kay called it uh, uh, object-oriented programming, and we implemented class-oriented programming. And this is what we are still doing now. And in, in originally, object-oriented programming was something totally different. It was uh, uh, small talk, if you know uh, small talk. Or, uh, I don't know small talk. I just played with it uh, many, many years ago. But uh, I, I, the important thing here are the principles, OK? So you have an object that uh, holds its own state. And uh, an object cannot change the state of another object, but uh, you can just uh, an object can just communicate with the other object by sending message, and uh, and uh, 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 while serving these messages, each object will change its own internal state. Okay, what what is this? What is this? It's the actor model, right? You know the actor model is the actor model if you know Erlang, if you know Akka, if you know Scala. This is the actor model. So we are not inventing nothing new. Small talk is uh, uh, like almost 50, probably 45 years old. Yeah, and 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 and, and it, it was the actor model. That's all. Okay. So there are a few myths about uh, object-oriented uh, programming. There are many more myths, surprisingly, about functional-oriented programming. Uh, we are thinking that it's something new, and actually it isn't. Uh, the theory is like uh, uh, 83 years old now. Uh, and, and if you think about it, Haskell is five uh, uh, years older than Java. So it's not something new. It's something that we are starting doing now or in the last years, and this is why we are feeling that it's new, but it isn't. Uh, we think that uh, functional programming is a well-defined thing, but it isn't. What it is functional programming? Which language is a functional programming language? Haskell for sure it is, but uh, Java 8, is it or not? Uh, yeah, because we have Lambda. Is it enough? Or, uh, well, you can do, you can do the same thing uh, even with Java 7, if you think about it, because with Java 7 you can do the same thing with anonymous inner class, so even that one could be functional, maybe. Or maybe you need much more than uh, uh, lambdas, you need pattern matching, uh, uh, you need uh, stronger uh, type inference, you need uh, higher kind of types. Uh, the, wh wh what is, where functional programming starts, you don't know, okay? You cannot say, it's a not well-defined thing. Uh, and it is not the opposite of object-oriented programming. You, are, you don't say, I'm doing functional or I'm doing object-oriented. The, the main point of this talk, actually, is that uh, you, can, you, you can combine them. And it's, if you do this, it's a smart move, okay? This is another uh, thing that I uh, thought a lot. Uh, functional programming is hard. Uh, it's, I believe it's just a matter of uh, familiarity. Uh, when I started working uh, a few years ago, I told, they gave me the object-oriented uh, book, and I uh, started new in uh, by heart what was a strategy. Okay, this is a strategy pattern. This is a command pattern. Uh, this is a factory, abstract factory, template, uh, whatever pattern. Uh, and and it, it was my uh, uh, bread and butter every, every, uh, of everyday work. Uh, but, uh, and, and then you start hearing about monads, and oh my God. What a monad is, okay? But it's just a pattern. It's a functional programming pattern. But we are not scared about strategy because we are doing strategy. We did strategy all life long, all working life long, uh, and we, are, we know them by heart. It's just a familiarity thing. It's not harder, okay? Uh, and it's not true that this functional programming is less efficient. The problem is that uh, uh, since we are doing object-oriented programming, we did object-oriented programming in the last decades 
uh, compiler are, 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 are optimized for those patterns, okay? Uh, and then if you start doing functional programming, you have uh, immutability, and since you have immutability, you create and destroy a lot of more of object, for instance, and uh, you are uh, pushing a lot uh, of burden more on the garbage collector, uh, and then uh, it's less efficient. Yes, that's true, but this is an implementation detail. Okay, this is how we are uh, we implemented object oriented, and how we built we tried to build functional programming on top of it. But for instance, the Haskell compiler is optimized for the functional pattern, so it doesn't pay that price. Okay, so yes, it's true that uh, functional programming is less efficient, but it's in, it is a, a, an implementation detail. It's a consequence of how we implemented it. Okay, and uh, yeah, functional program is good only for math. This is not true. I mean uh, that we have uh, 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 um, re we are using reactive programming uh, uh, at all, which is functional programming in the end to make graphic using the interface. And again, it's not true that you have to be 100% functional programming or 100% object oriented. Uh, you can do something in the middle and. Uh, let me say it is loudly. It's not true that if you do functional programming, job done, all, all your code is uh, clean or good. You, trust me, you can write shit code in a pure functional way. So, think with your head, right? Okay, so uh, I wanted to debunk some myth, but I, I just wanted to uh, uh, now to, to move forward with the talk by uh, sticking some, with some definition. So uh, I'm speaking about object now, and object are uh, uh, a mix of data and uh, behavior changing, changing the, the data. And, uh, and uh, functional programming, uh, I will refer to functional programming as a way of programming by evaluating uh, mathematical expression, we will see what mathematical mean in this context, and by uh, composing this mathematical, uh, not expression, of function, yes, expression, okay? So the first uh, difference that, that comes to mind uh, while speaking about object-oriented programming versus uh, functional programming is this, right? But this is only notation, okay? It's only notation. In reality, we are thinking about this. So f, the function, and the data on which that function operates are, ex are two things at the same level, okay? And the uh, 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 closure, the, 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 the lisp uh, uh, way of, say, uh, apply O to f, it's the right way to see this stuff. They are two things at the same level, okay? And if you think about it, the MapReduce uh, 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 algorithm is the, uh, uh, is the uh, implementation of, the, of this idea. It leverages this idea, okay? How does the MapReduce work, okay? I have a bunch of data distributed on many machines and uh, I, I have to apply a function on this data, and I need to decide if I want to move the data toward the function or the function toward the data. And guess what? The data are terabyte of stuff, and probably the function is one kilobyte. What, what you want to move? You move the function, right? And, and this is what, uh, on how the MapReduce algorithm works, but how we can decide if we want to move the data or the function, because uh, we are thinking to them exactly on the same level, okay? Otherwise, uh, you, will, you will decide, okay, the computation happens there, I have to move the data there, and, uh, and, and, this, and it will be the wrong decision, okay? So, function and data, or the, the, the data and, and what you do on this data are two things on the same level, okay? But actually, this notation hides an important, an important distinction, which is, of course, the polymorphism, okay? So polymorphism is, in reality, the, 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 the big strength of uh, object-oriented programming, okay? Of course, you can do something similar 
uh, with uh, functional programming with a bunch of uh, if uh, instance of uh, uh, in Java, or if you, have, if you are lucky enough, you have pattern matching, you do something similar. But uh, uh, polymorphism does not create a, a, a source code dependency uh, from the color to the collie. And, and this is the main difference. So let me demonstrate this with a very uh, simple example. So um, let's compare object-oriented and functional decomposition, OK? So we have a, 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 a few data structure. Uh, in this case, in my example, I have the integer, the addition, and the negation. And uh, I have to, a few operations that uh, has to be could be performed on this data structure, OK? And then I have two ways of approaching this problem, of decomposing this problem in smaller part. Uh, the first, sorry, the first one, of course, is the object-oriented way. So uh, I take, uh, uh, I, uh, for, for each of, uh, of these uh, uh, data structure, I create one class, and I add to, to that class the method that implemented that behavior, OK? So uh, I go uh, by filling the grid one class per row, OK? And the functional approach is the, I go uh, by, f uh, I fill the grid creating uh, one function for each column, meaning that I create a function, and that function does pattern matching if you, if you want, if you have it. Uh, 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 distinguishing the, the different kind of input that you got and doing different stuff. So in code, this is something like this, OK? I have my expression, uh, and I have these three implementation, and all the three implementation implements the, uh, the uh, different be the, the behavior defined by the interface in, in different way. This is, this is super straightforward. Uh, and uh, in the same way, uh, well, we are probably not much used to this, but it, it, this is the functional decomposition way. You have the pure data structure, and then you have three functions that implement this behavior uh, uh, by distinguishing the, um, the kind of input that you received. And, and this is why, why I say that in this case, uh, you need to know all the implementation. What you are writing here uh, as a uh, uh, as a uh, class loader, if you think of uh, in this term, dependency on the on the different kind of object you are passing it. Okay, if you want one more object, you have to depend on that object. Okay, while if you uh, if you create a new implementation of the object-oriented uh, uh, expression, it could be in a different jar and you don't care about it. So you don't have a compile time dependency, OK? Um, and yeah, the other thing to notice is that this stuff is quite verbose, but just because I, uh, I write in this in Java, and uh, you have to use the instance of, uh, and now, well, now with uh, with uh, uh, Java 12, we are starting having the switch expression, which could be nicer, or we could eventually have pattern matching in a different language or in a later version of Java, and this thing too could be nicer. But this is only a syntactic, syntactic thing, OK? So which one of the two is better? I don't have an answer. It depends, OK? As everything uh, in our uh, work, uh, there's no black and white. The answer is it depends. And it depends. If I have to write uh, an interpreter, probably, uh, but this is just my personal opinion. If I should write an interpreter, an interpreter probably I will use the functional programming approach. Uh, if I should write uh, a graphic user interface, uh, uh, which I hope I will not never again in my life, but if I should, uh, if I should probably, it will be. Uh, more handy to use the object-oriented approach. So again, uh, as usual, you have, if you have only one tool, you, you use the tool for everything. If you know two or more different tools, you have the uh, uh, lucky to, to choose the right one for the job at end. And this is what you should do, OK? So we spoke about decomposition, so uh, for me, the, the, the next 
uh, logical step to take was speaking about composition, of course, right? Uh, but uh, I found uh, that this distinction uh, was harder to make uh, uh, because, yeah, when you speak about functional composition, it's perfectly clear of what you're speaking about. I mean, functional programming is based on function composition. It's the heart of functional programming, okay? So there is no doubt of what you're speaking about. When you, speak in a, when you speak about composition in object-oriented uh, uh, way, of course, uh, the things are totally different. You do composition typically in two ways. The, the first way is, is the inheritance, and yeah, this is what normally happens. You f design that one, but for some reason you end up with this one. Uh, that's pretty normal, and, and the, uh, uh, the other thing to do this is uh, by, uh, not by inheritance, but by composition. And probably this is the, 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 the uh, preferable way of, use, of doing composition in object-oriented style. And usually we apply this second strategy by doing uh, uh, dependence injection, which is fine, but sometimes you are injecting the, with the wrong thing. So uh, pay attention to this, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, jokes apart, uh, tend to favor the, the, the uh, uh, composition uh, way versus the inheritance one. So this is about composition. Uh, I spoke about the biggest advantage of object-oriented uh, programming, which is polymorphism. Uh, there are a lot of advantages in uh, functional programming, uh, and the most important uh, uh, is, is for sure immutability. And uh, why it is important? Uh, well, because we, we know it's thread safe, it's easier to parallelize, it's, it's easier to, uh, uh, to cache because we don't, we don't have any cache invalidation problem if everything is immutable. It's easy to reason about it, to uh, check the correctness of what you are doing, uh, and, you, and you can also uh, 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 have better encapsulation with immutability. So there are a lot of good reasons to uh, favor an immutable approach, which is the preferred functional programming, functional programming approach. And in fact, uh, uh, what Michael Feder said is that, uh, yeah, object-oriented, you, the, the big point of programming is, uh, 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 is uh, control complexity, okay? Reduce complexity. And uh, object-oriented uh, and, and the uh, main source of complexity is mutability, okay? And uh, object-oriented functional programming uh, following two, historically two different paths. The first one choose to encapsulate uh, the mutability and the second one uh, decided to avoid completely at all. But this is just an historical thing, okay? There is no reason why you shouldn't do object-oriented with total immutability. There is no reason, and you should. And, and the next step is referential transparency. If you want to, uh, uh, y y okay, immutability is great, referential transparency is great here. Why you want to use referential transparency? transparency? Because referential transparency is, is uh, immutability with no side effects, okay? So let me clarify what it means. It's, it means that uh, 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 what you do, it doesn't depend on the history, it doesn't depend on the state, so uh, here I'm comparing uh, an immutable uh, thing, which is the string, with a, a mutable one, I'm doing exactly the same thing with, the, with these two things, and I'm, uh, I'm obtaining a, a different result. Here, I, I'm obtaining the wrong result. Why? Because I'm assuming referential transparency, I'm assuming no side effect and, and immutability on something that in, instead it is mutable, okay? Uh, so, Referential transparency, I said, it means no side effect. So it's reason to, it's easier, it's a win-win a, a thing. It's a win thing for developer because it's easier to reason about a referential transparency thing because uh, uh, if you have a referential transparent expression, 
you can in always moment uh, replace the execution of that expression, the result of that expression with the, with the result, okay? And, uh, and uh, in this way, you, this enables you to have uh, uh, effortless caching, okay? Because uh, if the, the value that are, are, you are caching are immutable, and when you call that expression, you have no side effect, you can, it means that you can always replace the evaluation of that expression with this result, okay? And you can do caching, for instance, in this way uh, since Java 8. Another uh, important difference between object-oriented and functional programming. What's wrong with this signature? In my opinion, what's terribly wrong with this signature is that, is the exception, okay? Because uh, uh, it is treating in an exceptional way something that shouldn't be, okay? Uh, is it an exceptional thing that I'm not able to parse a string into an integer? I don't think so, right? So why this uh, uh, an exception? And what's the problem about this? The problem is that uh, an exception is a, is a side effect and it's not cacheable. I cannot uh, use uh, the, 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 the caching system mechanism that, that I showed in the format slide if this thing is throwing an exception, okay? But uh, if, if I change the signature in this way, I can cache the result. And if the string is not... Uh, 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 it's not passable into an integer, I will just get a, an empty optional in. That's perfectly fine. I can cache that result as well. And I don't have to, care, to worry about if a particular string can or cannot be converted into an integer or not. I don't care. I don't have to pollute my code with, uh, with a bunch of exceptions uh, that create different branches that, 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 that has to be to tested and that uh, uh, make my code less readable and less maintainable. So in reality, in reality, uh, exception, yeah, this is a very functional programming point of view, but I know, but uh, uh, in reality, uh, uh, exception are glorified multi-level go to and blow up my code until somebody will catch it and you really don't want this on, you really don't want this in 99% in of cases, okay? Uh, yeah, you want that the exception blows up your stuff when you cannot do anything else about it, okay? But again, that there is a problem is not an exceptional thing, okay? That you can uh, not fetch your data from your JDBC connection is not an exceptional thing. It's part of your uh, workflow, not something aside of it, okay? Let's, let me bring you another example. Okay, I uh, created actually this example a, f a bit of times ago now, I guess two or, uh, or three years ago, and I wanted to show a point with this uh, example. Uh, I was to do, I wanted to do a comparison uh, in this context uh, between object-oriented and functional programming. And uh, yeah, what these two things does? They do the, the same thing. Uh, my task is this, I have a log file and I want to uh, find the first 40 lines that uh, are error uh, statement in my log file, okay? So I look for uh, uh, the line that starts with error, and I limit the result uh, to the first uh, 40, to the first 40 uh, result, to the first 40 errors. And I did the same using, uh, uh, in a declarative way, in a functional way, using the stream API. So what's the difference between these two? The main difference is not verbosity. Yes, the first one is m more verbose, but this is not the point. The, the, the important point, the, the, the point that I wanted to make with this example is the separation of concern, okay? If you look about, if you look at the, the, the uh, functional programming example, you have uh, the management of the 
uh, of the uh, reading of the file in one line and the filtering of the error log in one other point and the limiting to the 40 uh, to the first 40 results in another point and uh, collecting of all the results in a list in another point. And uh, uh, if you see at the corresponding implementation, uh, 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 object-oriented implementation, uh, all the responsibility are scattered around in your code. And you don't want this, okay? So how cool? How cool is, how better, how Better in all cases is this functional implementation, right? How cool is it? Beautiful, right? And then uh, I showed this thing to my uh, object-oriented devil alter ego, who is uh, Simone Bordet, the main uh, maintainer of the Jetty web server that for sure you know. I showed it, it is, this uh, code to him and said, and he, he said uh, he had a very Simple requirement, like, right? Uh, he said, okay, I'm passing this uh, log file, but probably uh, if I have an error, I could have some hint about that error in, uh, the, in the line immediately before the error line inside the log, right? So I don't want uh, the last, uh, I don't want uh, the first 40 error, but uh, I was the, the, the first 40 error, each one with the line before. So I want two lines for each error, right? It's a perfectly uh, reasonable requirement, okay? And uh, I thought about it in the context of my functional solution, and the result was this, okay? Simone, I had my perfect uh, code, my wonderful Coca-Cola bottle, and Simone dropped a Mentos inside it. The, this was the effect, okay? Uh, and why? Okay, let's try to, uh, uh, um, to do this exercise together. Uh, this is the object-oriented solution. Yes, I had to add some more state. I had to add a, co a couple of statements more. Uh, but it's pretty reasonable. I had to change a bit uh, the uh, initial implementation to accommodate this requirement. If you think, if you read it, it's pretty similar. It's almost identical to the original solution, right? Now let's try to adapt the functional solution. What do you do? Okay, I at this I had a, a few struggles to do this, uh, and I. Uh, Worked on this together with Simone, of course, and uh, uh, this was the first uh, 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 outcome, which is really ugly, okay? Uh, what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm uh, traversing the, 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 uh, all the file once and creating this couple of, uh, of uh, lines, uh, and then I am traversing it uh, uh, a second time and filtering and, uh, and limiting and collecting it. This is what, the prob what is the problem of this? Uh, this is not very functional for, this is ugly and not very functional because I have mutability and I need to read the whole file in memory before uh, being uh, able to process this, okay? And then we think a bit more about this and we came up with this different solution so we figured out that uh, we need uh, a zip, and that for a reason that I don't understand, uh, uh, the stream API doesn't come with a zip uh, function, so I created mine. What a zip does is, is that I have a stream of A and B, and I have a function that combines uh, uh, one A and one B into one C. So for, uh, it combines the first uh, A and from one stream and the first B of the other stream into a C and the same thing for the second and so on. Okay, so this is why it's called a zip. Uh, and we don't have it for some strange reason in the stream API that I don't know, so I figured out that I could implement it this way and then I uh, was doing, uh, uh, using a, uh, this zip function inside the inside my solution. So what I did is creating two streams of the same file, and uh, uh, on one of the two I create uh, an offset of one position by adding uh, this null at the beginning. Okay, so 
uh, I'm traversing the two with this offset, so in reality I'm traversing the pair of one line and the line after, and at that point I could do my filtering, limiting, and collecting stuff, okay? So this is sort of nice, it works, but it took me hour to do this, and uh, it's not a small rewriting of the original solution. It's not a small change. It's a complete rewriting. So it's not true that func I'm a functional advocate or a f I'm n well known of being a functional advocate, but I'm, I'm, I'm more a pragmatic advocate, a pragmatic programming advocate, okay? So it's not true that functional is the best thing in all cases, and this is one demonstration, very practical, okay? Uh, I want to go quick here, there are, uh, I showed you a few differences, the, uh, we spoke about polymorphism versus functional decomposition, we spoke about the mutability, uh, yeah, the, the error management, which is, in my opinion, quite ugly, if you do it uh, purely via exception, we speak about we spoke about uh, imper imperative versus declarative code, and there are a few other differences that I wanted to underline to give you the complete picture. Okay, so let's suppose I have uh, this thing. Okay, uh, what I'm doing here, um, I have um, a, a store uh, of of the product that I'm selling with a given price, okay? And uh, my store is international, so uh, um, the price of my stores are in euro, but I'm selling uh, this stuff uh, in uh, US dollars, so I, uh, to give the proper US dollar price, I have to uh, uh, read the price from the database and then read the uh, conversion rate between uh, USD and euro from a uh, remote service, whatever, and then I have just to multiply them, okay? And uh, I'm doing this, okay, these are not implemented, but you understand uh, uh, what they are for. And so the solution is that uh, you, do, you load the uh, price in USD, and then you do the conversion, and, then, and that is the final, that is the final uh, result. Okay, what's the problem with this? The problem with this is that uh, you are doing this uh, uh, slow, uh, uh, very I.O. bound operation one after the other, uh, and you are wasting a lot of time, okay? You would like to possibly do, do these two operations which are independent in parallel, right? So the, the object-oriented solution is this one. Okay, I pushed the thread model to the extreme consequence since I hope, I hope that you won't do this. But this is what you are doing when using thread, okay? Uh, this is just the skeleton, the essence, but in reality, you are doing this. You have one process uh, uh, loading the, 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 the conversion rate, the other pro process loading the price, and then you access a shared data structure and multiply the two results uh, by, uh, by them, okay? By adjusting the shared data structure. So what you have to do here? You have to synchronize the, the point where both things access, okay? And uh, yes, uh, uh, this is an extremization of what you do, but you do this. You have shared the data between thread, and you have to synchronize the this communication point, the point where these data are accessed. And this is simple in this case because I have just one point, I have just one double. But when you do an object referencing another three objects and each of them reference a forest of objects, uh, uh, what happens? It is, okay? This is the problem of object-oriented. Uh, uh, okay, Joe, Joe Armstrong that disappeared a few days ago, yeah, say that, uh, yeah, you, I just want a banana, right? I am taking this banana and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling with it the, the, the banana, the gorilla, the tree, and the, all the forest attached to it. And this is the problem of object-oriented object programming. 
and, and, and if you have to synchronize the banana, probably you can. If you have to synchronize the entire forest, it is not that simple. And uh, raise your hand if you never had a race condition in your thread or in your uh, data structures, OK? OK, so usually the object the, 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 the functional solution is better because it relies on composition, OK? So what we are doing here is that uh, we have these two futures that work in parallel, and uh, I have no visible state that has to be synchronized, and uh, I just uh, will receive a callback when all the two data will be available, and I will do the multiplication. OK, this is better. Uh, the only problem with this, again, this is a simple case, but it's callback based, which is not up a certain point. After this, that point, you will get, of course, this effect, right? So you will get the, the callback of the callback of the callback. Uh, if you are a Node.js guy, you know of what I'm speaking about, right? OK, another small difference is, uh, well, uh, expression versus statement. This is a very uh, typical thing, but this is just a, a language-related uh, thing. You probably, I'm mentioning this, but probably you cannot do much about this, OK? But uh, uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, you should favor expression instead of, say, of statement, OK? But of course, this is, depends on the language you are using. There are uh, languages like Scala, where you don't have statement at all. Everything is, in a, is an expression. Java is not like that. Uh, but uh, there are a few choices. For instance, often I prefer to, to use the ternary uh, expression in, instead of the if statement. And also the Java architect are realizing this. Now, now in Java 12, I don't know if you see it, you have a, a, a new switch, which is not a switch statement. It's a switch expression. The switch return a result, OK? And, uh, uh, and it's also a matter that the, 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 the other main point is, again, the, the main winning point of functional programming, composability. Expression compose, statement does. OK, uh, yeah, this is another very small thing. I mean, I, we have different way of iterating stuff. I already discussed this. Uh, in Java, typically, you have the, well, the, 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 the most historical one is the external iteration. Then with the introduction of the stream API of the uh, Lambda expression in Java 8, uh, we had also the internal iteration. And uh, you know, if you are a pure functional guy, you don't do iteration. In reality, you do recursion. Well, uh, I don't like this. Uh, this is, uh, if, you, if you always do this, because this is the functional way of doing, this is just functional uh, Talibanism, OK? It's not, you are not being pragmatic. You are, you are a functional Taliban. There's no way to blow up your stack with this stuff. As said, is, uh, unless you don't, have, you don't have a recursive algorithm, of course, OK? Uh, and uh, to conclude, yeah, I, I uh, uh, read a, a few blogs, a few interesting articles of why you could mix, uh, because what's the point of, of this discussion? Uh, we want to mix, we, we have understood that there is not a perfect solution, right? We want to mix functional and object-oriented, okay? And now we, want, we, we, we would like to think about uh, what's the best way to, to mix this stuff in, okay? So I read this uh, uh, blog, uh, and the main point of the, this very short article is that, okay, you you normally should use functional programming in this small part and do coordination with object-oriented uh, pattern, which m probably makes sense. I thought a bit about it, and probably I realized that I prefer the opposite, right? I, 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 I prefer to, do, to use mutability for performance when it is confined in the small and do the orchestration in a functional like uh, uh, in a functional uh, in, uh, composition uh, style. Uh, but this, again, is 
just one a matter of testes, and, and second, uh, it really depends on the problem that you have. But think about this, okay? Think about the possibility that is, that is open, okay? So the, the, the final, uh, uh, the, the bottom line, the final message of this is that uh, you don't have to be 100% uh, fun uh, pure functional uh, uh, pro programming. You, you can go probably 80 or 80%, it's fine. You have to be pragmatic or how Voltaire say a, a, a few centuries before, uh, perfect is enemies of good, okay? It's questionable, it's pure functional programming, it's perfect, but even if it is, it is the enemy of good enough, so try to find the right balance, okay? And yeah, object-oriented plus functional doesn't have to be like this. It, it could make sense of it if you use it in the, in the right way, okay? Uh, and the bottom line of everything is be pragmatic, and, uh, and most important, uh, you have to know both, both things, right? You have to know object-oriented, you have to know functional, and you, then you realize how to combine them together, okay? The bottom line is, is, is all you have is an hammer, an object-oriented hammer of a functional hammer. Whatever you do, it will resemble to one nail, okay? And this, this is not what you want. Be pragmatic and, and be not, yeah, polyglottomy, polyglottism is important, but being polyparadigmatic, I don't know if it is the right word, but knowing more paradigm is more important than knowing more languages, okay? And that's all.